Prime Minister, Commissioner, I am very much pleased to host uh, Prime Minister Kari Vasili for this Association Council. I am pleased because Georgia is one of our closest friends and partners. And this Council is a historic one because it is the first one since the European leaders recognize uh, Georgia's European perspective and outline the steps needed for Georgia to get the candidate status. This is a clear proof of the European Union commitment to further strengthen our relations responding to the European ambitions of Georgia. But these ambitions, as always, ambition comes with responsibilities. First, a responsibility to continue with important reforms especially on the priorities, the 12 priorities identified by the European Commission. And second, a responsibility to try to overcome polarization, to build bridges across the political spectrum, and to focus all collective efforts of the Georgian nation to reach the proclaimed objective to join the European Union, which is not only something that the government has to do, but the whole political spectrum and the whole society. Allow me to remember or to remind that the European Union accession is a merit-based process, that there are no shortcuts and no magic involved. It's not a matter of uh, political declarations, but political will that converts wills and results. And only visible and tangible progress in reforms can drive this process forward. The criteria and expectations are very clear when it comes to issues such as political culture based on inclusiveness, respect for the principles of democracy, the rule of law, the independence of judiciary, freedom of media, or alignment with European Union standards and policies. Georgia has decided to embark on the European Union path and also to take on these responsibilities and now it's relevant, relevant is to deliver. Allow me to stress also that the accession process needs to be accompanied by a national consensus. And the political forces has to find a way to work together. And once again, it's not just a matter of the government, but the all political parties. And that's why we call the process an inclusive process because it has to reflect the wish of the overwhelming majority of the population to link their future to the European Union. I want to stress the importance of the civil society. I want to stress that the European Union accession path brings tasks for all actors in the society, but the ruling party has, of course, the main responsibilities there. It's not easy. It's not easy, especially in the current geopolitical context. But you are not alone. The European Union and all the European Union institutions are here to help and assist. Let me say a few words about the political dialogue that today in this Council we have been holding together. A political dialogue which is, is central to our discussions. It has been central today, it should be continue being central tomorrow. We are friends and partners, and we can talk openly in praising the work done, but also in pointing out where more efforts are still needed. I have shared our assessment on some key areas where Georgia's performance recently has raised some concerns such as the judiciary, the rule of law, and media freedom, including increasing political pressure on independent oversight institutions and opposition media. These areas are crucial, are crucial when it comes to European values and principles, and we count on George's effort to address the existing shortcomings. When again, the government first, the whole political spectrum after, and the whole 
civil society also. We have been reviewing the situation around the separatist breakaway regions, a very important issue for Georgia. And we have stressed that the European Union stands firmly by Georgia and fully support your territorial integrity and that we will continue our efforts in this regard through our special representative for the region and our civilian monitoring mission. Prime Minister, we also had the opportunity to appreciate your efforts to contribute to the peace in the region. We also reiterated in the strongest possible terms our condemnation of the Russia war of aggression against Ukraine, and we'll further discuss regional challenges of Odina now. The European Union is determined to support the resilience of our close partners in the eastern neighborhood, and in this regard, we will also work to strengthen Georgia's resilience, especially in the area of cybersecurity and in the fight against disinformation. We know that Georgia has been seriously impacted by the new geopolitical situation. And we are also discussing here today, and we will continue discussing, how we can help Georgia to overcome these challenges and continue with the reform process despite these new difficulties. This meeting today is a good proof of the unwavering support of the European Union to Georgia's territorial integrity and has also showed, showed that our relations have made a qualitative leap as Georgia is now firmly on the European path. I am looking very much forward to see Georgia advance on this path. And we hope that all Georgia's political forces will seize this historic opportunity and step up their efforts to obtain the candidate status and advance closer to the European Union. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Prime Minister, please. Thank you very much, dear High Representative, Mr. Commissioner. Today's Association Council meeting was a special event as it marked the first highest level institutional meeting since the historic decision of the European Council, recognizing Georgia's European perspective. During our meeting, we have extensively discussed steps which will advance Georgia on this complex but also very motivating path. And this path leads us to where Georgia naturally belongs, namely in the family of European democracies where we share common values, have common goals, and promote peace and solidarity. The European perspective comes with huge responsibility, and we perfectly understand it, to ensure highest political, economic, and legal convergence with the European Union. The historic decision of the European Council created a whole new set of benchmarks that will play a game-changing role for Georgia. And yes, Georgia is fully committed to implementing 12 priorities as identified by the Council. Immediately after the Council decision on the 1st of July, we presented a concrete action plan with specific deadlines per priority and launched an inclusive process which brings together members of the different political groups, opposition parties, the government and the civil society. Although I have to mention, regrettably, some radical opposition parties do not participate in this process. We remain strongly committed to fully exploiting the potential of the association agreement, including the DCFTA. Very recently, we have adopted the new association agenda for 2021-2027, which reflects the ambitious goals 
on our common agenda. Achieving maximum integration into the EU single market remains our, one of our core goals. Developing connectivity uh, between the EU and Georgia, especially in the Black Sea, promises important benefits to the wider region, especially given the current geopolitical context and the major challenges we all face, like energy security, food security. We have invited our EU colleagues to tap into a unique possibility that Georgia, as a potential key transit hub on EU's global connectivity map, can offer. We also discussed the war in Ukraine, and also we discussed the peaceful resolution of the Russia-Georgia conflict, which started way before, 2008, when we had a war, a large-scale war with Russia. Uh, and since then, Russia occupies 20% of our territory. Uh, EU's active role in the process and its firm support for Georgia's territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders is crucial as ever. Uh, we have shared with our European colleagues our assessment of the recent developments in the occupied territories and stressed the key importance for the full implementation of the EU-mediated 12th of August 2008 ceasefire agreement by the Russian Federation. High Representative, Commissioner, let me conclude by thanking you for hosting the EU-Georgia Association Council meeting. We stay committed to the goals and values that unite us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner, please. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much. I also want to welcome you, Prime Minister. Uh, thank you very much, High Representative. Uh, um, I think that um, we should be all pleased by the fact that Georgia is a country with a recognized European perspective. This is a major opportunity, a major development, not only compared to the meeting we had last year, but also compared to any meeting we have had before with Georgia. Uh, in the association councils. And I think that now the priorities are clear. We had an open, frank discussion about them. And that is, of course, uh, how we can anchor our solid cooperation that we have built over the years based on the association agreement to make this European perspective a reality. I think that today we need to send a message of encouragement. The moment is now to push ahead with the reforms, not to lose time or energy on internal divisions, but to work together. The progress of Georgia towards the EU will, of course, require time and very serious efforts by all. We are ready to mobilize all our available assistance to support you on this. And I want to underline the importance that all parties and the civil society rally around this goal. This is a unique national priority and a unique opportunity in front of the nation. At this stage, we, of course, recommend Georgia to focus on the implementation of the 12 priorities as set out in the opinion of the Commission. Strengthening the rule of law, implementing the necessary justice reforms to ensure a judiciary independent of outside interests, increase the fight against corruption, eliminating the excessive influence of vested interests in, the, in economic, political and public life, and strengthening the in, independence of uh, media, of course, are among these key tasks. And I want to assure you that, of course, we will closely follow and support Georgia in this work. Because next year, hopefully, as we will assess your progress as part of our enlargement reporting exercise, I do hope that we will be able to evaluate the progress made in a positive way and to explain to the member states the tech record that you will be establishing by then and hopefully the time 
and quality of reforms will show your determination and delivery. We also took stock of our bilateral agenda, which has advanced since the last Association Council of last year. As this information thrives, it remains important to communicate clearly on the advantages of our cooperation. In this context, I want to highlight the Eastern Partnership Economic and Investment Plan, which can generate a massive, at least 3.9 billion euros of public and private investments only in Georgia. But to fully deliver on this potential, a supportive investment climate with legal certainty is essential. On the visa-free regime, we are happy to see that travel is picking up after the COVID crisis. We are also working closely together on some of the challenges we face, especially as regards asylum applications by Georgian citizens in the EU, which are often not well-founded. But we explored how to further strengthen our cooperation, which is already quite effective. In terms of trade, we have seen successes. I'm very pleased that the Georgian and the EU companies will be able to bid for more public procurement calls as a result of our converging standards and our agreements. We agreed to keep on supporting small and medium-sized enterprises to use the opportunities presented by our cooperation. And we also discussed strengthening connectivity between Georgia and the EU, be it in terms of digital, energy, or transport links. All these are key steps which are bringing our economies and societies closer together. In conclusion, let me confirm that our aim is to support Georgia to address the 12 priorities outlined in the opinion, the recovery of Georgia's economy, and to support the strengthening of the country's resilience, all for the benefit of the people of Georgia. And of course, you can always count on my personal support uh, in this regard. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we take a few questions, of course, with the preference uh, to the journalists here physically in the room. We have also a lot of uh, Georgian journalists uh, connected from the Tbilisi, so very well welcome to you. And just technical remark that we don't have translation uh, to Georgian, unfortunately, exceptionally this time, so the questions can be asked only in uh, English, French and German. This is the translation we have. So first question I've seen was Tamara Rustavi too. Georgian TV company, Rustavi Tuta, Maranu Tsubidze. Uh, Prime Minister just mentioned... Micro. Yeah, maybe, maybe speak a little bit louder. Okay, I can do it louder. Uh, Prime Minister mentioned then uh, that the government ready and uh, is working uh, to meet all 12 priorities. Also, Mr. Borrell, you just mentioned that one of the most priority is polarization and process should be inclusive. So, without engagement of main opposition party, what do you think? Is it possible to fulfill this uh, priority and what will be your advice to opposition parties and also to the ruling party? Thank you. Well, as I said, uh, the decision process is a national endeavor being led, led by the government but in which everybody has to participate. The whole society, which has shown uh, an overwhelming engagement with that, and all the political spectrum. And when I'm talking about to try to avoid polarization, I am talking to all poles. Polarization, it's a multiplicity of poles. I'm talking to the government, who has the main responsibility, but to the whole political spectrum. And I think that everybody has to understand that uh, this is an inclusive process in which everybody has to participate. Thank you. Commissioner, you want to... um, just to share a bit of experience that we uh, have seen already uh, along the way with um, many candidate countries. Um, political polar polarization, I wouldn't call it exceptional. Uh, if you look at the Balkans, uh, you see many uh, countries where uh, this is a challenge still. However, uh, the success of becoming a candidate country and the success of becoming uh, an EU member uh, cannot be achieved without agreeing that this is a national priority. Uh, so 
this national priority not only will have to be established uh, and agreed, but this would have to be followed through in political actions, uh, in the parliament, not only by the government, but all actors who make Georgia function. Thank you. Next question I've seen, Ketevan. Uh, thank you so much, um, Peter. Um, thank you so much for giving the floor and good evening to our dear speakers. Um, uh, Mr. High Rep, you just said that we should all seize uh, this moment because it's a historic moment for all, all of us and we would like to receive uh, candidate status as soon as it is possible. Uh, we are so determined and persistent. Uh, can you tell us more about the procedures? What should we expect uh, this year in December? Um, document uh, which you mentioned, uh, Mr. Commissioner, yesterday after the meeting with uh, um, Ukrainians, and also about the uh, document uh, enlargement uh, um, report uh, for the next uh, year in October. And also, I would like to ask you if uh, all these uh, 12 conditions will be met, the decision will be automatic or not. Thank you so much. Commissioner, maybe it's uh, more for you. Okay. I'm, I'm happy to take both, uh, if you agree. Um, well, um, Maybe I start uh, from where I left off uh, during the press conference with, uh, with Ukraine. Um, we can talk about the process, uh, but um, to be honest with you, it's not very interesting. Uh, what is interesting is how the work is going to be done and when the work is going to be done. And the work is first to complete the 12 priorities. Because enlargement is a merit-based process. Uh, the High Representative already explained. So once there is delivery on the 12 priorities, I'm sure that there will be uh, delivery and there should be delivery also on our side. Uh, the second point I want to raise is, of course, delivery also means delivering reforms on the ground that are working. Delivery on the ground reforms that are working for the benefit of the economy, of the people, of the society, uh, so that the real integration on the ground can start, meaning that there will be even more European investors coming, there will be more trade going, there will be more jobs, uh, there will be social convergence uh, with Europe uh, on the basis of rules created here in Europe. This is the real integration. So the process is very amusing, but uh, my focus has always been on the real integration. How do we uh, integrate ourselves with our neighbors. Um, and finally, because I don't want to, of course, uh, uh, abandon um, um, the question, this year uh, what you should expect from us coming is uh, the last part of the opinion, which is um, a lengthy technical document, most probably, um, which compares the the application, the, the potential application of EU law with that existing now in Georgia, meaning how Georgia would be able to cope with the need of, of applying fully EU rules. We have the um, DCFTA that covers, it doesn't mean it is identical, uh, it covers 70% uh, of the EU acquis because uh, of course, third countries don't have to apply fully uh, all the rules that we are, uh, we are having, but it covers 70%. So what you have already is some level of compliance, but we need to see how in the future uh, Georgia will not only be able to legislate, so to take over uh, these rules, but how it is going to be able to enforce it. And we will come uh, with this uh, for all three um, applicants, new applicants. Uh, and from next year, of course, uh, all these three new candidates, hopefully by then Georgia is also going to be a candidate, we'll see, um, will be reported upon like the other uh, candidate countries uh, for membership in the EU.
Understand? Automatically. Yeah, I understand. The decision, the decision is most likely to be made again by the leaders uh, of the EU, as this is a strategic decision always. This has been always the case, and I don't think that uh, we will change this time. Thank you. We take one last question since uh, the participants still need to go to continue the Council, but we go now over to Zoom to colleagues from Tbilisi, and the first one asking for the floor was Salo Abulashvili from Inter Press News Agency. Salo, your microphone is being open, so we will need to wait one second. Now it's open. You can ask your question. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity, and uh, I hope uh, my voice is coming well. Um, so my question is, more than two months have passed since we got the European perspective instead of candidate status. Now everything depends on how successfully Georgia implements the 12-point uh, recommendations prepared by the European Commission. So my question is, uh, do you see that our political parties, government and the opposition are putting Georgia's strategic interests above narrow political um, interests. Do you have such impression from the steps that uh, Georgian government and opposition are taking forward uh, the polarization of our in environment? What can you say about uh, this? My question is uh, to Mr. Borrell, and thank you. Look, uh, I, I can only repeat what I have already said. You can ask the same question 30 times, they will have to say the same answer. This is an inclusive process, and we call to all political parties to engage in this process in good faith and in, in a cooperative manner. One can have different approaches, and certainly, in polarization, as the uh, Commissioner already has said, is not some, an exclusivity of uh, Georgia. Polarization is part of the political life. But uh, as everything in life, uh, it, has to be, it has to be in the right measure. No? Too much polarization brings instability and jeopardizes the progress. Too little polarization means that the political life is uh, not exactly a democratic one. So we need a certain polarization in order to show different approaches and different points of view. That's right, that's democracy. But uh, this polarization has not to reach a level in which it jeopardizes the process and puts in danger the fulfillment of the objectives. I am not going to, to judge the internal political life of Georgia, but I have to call to all political parties to understand that this is a, a collective endeavor and this is a historical moment that offers an opportunity. Prime Minister, yes, of course. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I already uh, mentioned this, and I want to repeat. The ruling party and the government, we open the doors to all political players, to all the opposition parties. And as I mentioned in my uh, press statement, uh, unfortunately, some uh, opposition parties, especially the main opposition party does not participate in this process. So therefore, I want to once again uh, reiterate and reconfirm our full readiness to work with all political parties, to all opposition parties, including uh, those uh, who are in the parliament, outside the parliament, civil society. But as you mentioned, uh, Mr. Borrell, not only government, but also the opposition party should uh, participate in this process. So therefore, it is absolutely our clear determination and motivation to once again, I want to mention uh, that uh, Georgia is ready, the government, the ruling party is ready to fulfill all these 12 priorities. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes it for you, journalists. And as I said, uh, the council continues. So thank you very much for attending. Have a very nice evening. Bye.